grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today is the Old Testament lesson just read from Deuteronomy chapter 5, the story and, and command of the Sabbath. We find our text at the end of the first five books. The children of Israel have been freed from slavery. They were in bondage to Pharaoh for 400 years. After they were freed by God with a mighty hand crossed the Red Sea and were led to Mount Sinai, God gave them ten commands, ten words, to show them his will and his desire for them. One of those commands was pretty simple. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. For in six days God created the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he Sabbath. Rest. Now I want you to put yourself in the position of those people of Israel after having so many generations of slavery and God commanding them to rest. But they thought that was the win. But they thought that was the good commandment. Well, God wants us to rest. Finally! We can be at rest. As a slave, they had no control over their bodies, over their lives, over who they would marry, their children, their property, their, their name. They had no control or life of their own at all. And so when God freed them to be his people, he freed them to be at rest. Why then do we, who are free in Christ, have such a hard time understanding what it means to rest? Don't you think that's weird? I mean, most people that I know really like the idea of resting. Most would say that this is a good thing and even that they need it, whether you're talking about the daily cycle of sleep and awake, or the weekly cycle, or the seasonal cycle, whatever it is, we understand that there is something built into us in creation that says, there's a time for work, and there's a time for rest. Yet we somehow have messed that up in an amazing way. We want work to be like rest. We want rest to be like work. And so neither one of them really ends up being all that satisfying. I've wondered occasionally if the reason why it seems like we have such a hard time teaching our young people what it means to work is because we have not been able to teach them how to not work, how to be at rest. What are we working for? What are we resting from? Now, the reason all of this is so messy, of course, is sin. God created us to work. It's a little bit disappointing, it seems sometimes, but God actually made us and our bodies and souls and minds to work, to use these things as he intended. And just as God himself rested, so God wants you and me to rest from our labor. <coughs> but remember, that first word of this commandment, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Or as we had in our translation, observe the Sabbath day. This the rest here, Sabbath, doesn't simply mean not doing something. It means something more. 
We rest in order to receive what God has done. Let me say that again. We rest in order to receive what God has done. First and most obviously, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That he is the one who has rested from his labors on the cross in his death and resurrection. He has won for you and me salvation and eternal life so that I don't have to work for my eternity. That is already in place. I am at rest in Jesus. And so we gather at this place again and again and again to hear and to receive what God has already done for us in his son, Jesus Christ. Because of that, I can look at everything else kind of with the right lens. I can look at the world and see God's good creation, which he has made for us. I can look at even the work that I do and see that as a gift that God has given to me to partner with him in serving my neighbor. But if I don't first of all recognize that I rest in Jesus, everything else falls apart. Everything else. And I end up in this kind of frantic mode of constantly trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing in order to gain God's favor? In order to prove that I'm a good worker? Maybe? Whatever it might be. But if I recognize that Jesus Christ has done the work of salvation for me, then this day, Sunday, becomes very different. Then a day like today is about remembering, observing, receiving what God has given to you and me. That's a very different picture, beloved. That's a picture that says coming, coming to church is about recognizing what God has done continues to do and will always do for you in Jesus Christ. And in that lies your true rest and peace. And because of that, you are free to work. You are free to actually labor and love and care for your neighbor big ways, in little ways, at jobs, at home, with friends, with neighbors, whomever it might be, you can do that work and rest from it knowing that Jesus Christ is the one who has ultimately done it all for you. You don't have to prove to God anything. You don't have to prove to anyone anything. Jesus Christ has done what needs to be done, and you are free. So this cycle of rest and work and work and rest can be there over and over and over again. And each time we go through this cycle and remember that God, the God who brought the children of Israel out of slavery, who brought you out of slavery from sin and death, continues to bring you out of sin and death and into eternal life. That because that God does these great and mighty things for you every day, you are free. Free to be a part of this world and to love as God has loved you. So come, receive the fruits of his death and resurrection. Remember, rejoice, and pass on his life by receiving what he is given to you, given to you, and in turn give that out to others. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith in the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.